Gettysburg Museum of History Studios. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, patrons, and welcome to this episode of Addressing Gettysburg. And uh, today, this is something that uh, I'm sorry for people who are not um, at the first lieutenant level, uh, because as an audio only, this might not really translate very well for you. Um, but if you are a first lieutenant, this is uh, exactly why you are a first lieutenant, uh, so that you can see uh, how things go. And uh, today we're going to talk, you, you, you've all seen colorized photos, old photos colorized. And you might say to yourself, hmm, how do they do that? Is there color information there that they somehow magically extract with a, a chemical or something? Or do they go in by hand and color everything in? Like, how do they colorize black and white photographs? How can you add what is not there? Um, well, there's a way to do it, and it's arduous, uh, according to my uh, willingness to sit and work at something. <laughs> I don't have time the consuming. Is probably what time mean. consuming is is definitely a good word for it. Uh, Dr. James Beely is on. Be I'm always Beely. It's a hard G in there. Oh, Beagley. Yes. So like Bigly. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bigly, Bigly, yeah, Bigly. Yeah, Great Bape. Remember the cut the cartoon, Bigly, Bigly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great Bape. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> Dr. James that's is with old, us. That's an old reference. I know. That's uh, old Hanna Barbera. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you're with us today. You're from TeachTheCivilWar.com. Mm -hmm. Teaching the Civil War, um, and uh, you you do it through multimedia uh, ways, right? I mean, how uh, digital media? I mean. What's that specifically? You mean like teaching the Civil War? Well, I mean, yeah, like what, what exactly is, so what's it, your bag, baby? My bag is getting people to um, learn about history and the Civil War in different ways. So, it, yes, I can look at a primary resource or a primary source in a book, but I can also go to the Library of Congress and get that primary source and interact with it in a multitude of ways through through colorizing it, through just zooming in and out of images, through just analysis of it. Um, the other big story that I always like to say is, you know, if I hand you a book and there's a picture of the Rose Farm dead, someone's already written a narrative under that, whether it be correct or not. I've got books that have it listed as dead in the first day of the battle. Right, you right. Know, so, and that was done by a Navy, a guy at the uh, Naval Academy, you know, listed at the first in Wisconsin or whatever, you know, it was. And, you know, somebody's already written that narrative, but I can also throw that picture up and let you write the narrative and that you scaffold the information that you've learned. So that's how I learned to use technology. So from Google Earth and how can you do that um, to video, to colorizing images, just, just a multitude of ways that you can interact and taking the Gettysburg Address and putting it into a word cloud and see which images come up, uh, which words come up um, higher or hmm. um, and why were those words important to in that speech at that time or take that now i just did i just did one not too long ago take that speech and write it use chat gpt to write it as another author so like oh interesting yeah so write the gettysburg address as if you're jk rowling how would you write it as Dr. a millennial right right the millennial right that's <laughs> a tweet gen z how many, or how many tweets would it take to do the gettysburg address <laughs> right 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 yeah. <laughs> just little things like that or um you know you can use generative ai or you know image ai to um just again take a picture i want to create an image of abraham lincoln giving the gettysburg address or taking a selfie before the gettysburg address mm. so how can mm. kids take tech take original primary and even secondary sources like images from you know uh, Kunstler or Gallen or one of those guys and take that information and learn from it in a digital format and have access to it because even you know the Adams County Historical Society and all these historical societies and the and then museums have these resources online that you can access now that previously were inaccessible to people right so how do you take that and use it in your classroom or use it as yourself to learn more about a topic it's amazing to me the uh, the things that people are able to do with AI visually uh, already. You know, you, I, I'm seeing a lot more of this now, especially with history uh, channels on YouTube. They'll use AI to create an image of an ancient person who we have no photograph of. Oh, right. Maybe there's paintings or maybe there's a statue or some kind of a likeness, but not really, um, not really anything... Uh, concrete that we can say for certain that is what you know julius caesar looks like or whatever right or they'll take 
there was one that went around not too long ago. Somebody took the presidents mm -hmm. and put them in modern. Attire. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you see that one? That uh, one was really good. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, and, and it, what's amazing to me is when I've tried AI visuals, um, uh, Photoshop just had an update, and they have an AI thing in there now, and they were, they have yep. a tutorial, and I did the tutorial, and as long as I did the tutorial, everything I told it to do, it did, and it looked realistic, and mm -hmm. I was like, this is amazing. Then I tried to take what I learned in the tutorial on an image that I took, <laughs> and, it <didn't> work. <laughs> and it's demented, right? Right, and and maybe it's I don't know how to use the right language to get it to do whatever I needed to do. I don't know how to tweak it after it's created something. Like I had an image uh, that I took of the Sherfy barn, and the fence is in the foreground. The fence kind of leads you into the picture towards the barn, which okay. is in the center of the of the of the of the frame, and um, I said. Union soldiers leaning on fence, firing muskets. Yeah, they won't get that. Not even close. Not. I mean, what it thought a Union soldier looked like. It was. It was scary. It was. It was creepy to me. It was like it was, it was creepy. Yeah. Almost demonic looking. Right. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm amazed at people who have already mastered AI. Uh, I think some of it is the program too. I use uh, well, not for me. Well, you know, like mid mid journey is like one of the best ones, but it's a paid service. So the ones oh, so that you have I to pay, yeah, that's the problem. So that's the problem. You know, I use like Dolly is the Chat GPT version. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's what do you have good. to pay for these things? Well, Chat the the Chat GPT Dolly D A L L E dash E is free, and okay. it does some for you. Um, Adobe Firefly has one. Okay, uh, that that does some free stuff. That's a good one. Firefly. But so I, I have Adobe Creative Cloud. So you don't would, need it. It's free. The Firefly oh, is free okay. as part of Creative Cloud. Not it, it, ex, exterior or in, it's not it's, part. You of, don't have to have, have Creative the, Cloud to have okay. the Firefly, right? All right. Well, then maybe then I will. Uh, I will do. Let me just adjust your. Oh, shot I keep wanting to look up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or even you know, you ask about what I do and like taking. You can put a green screen. You can go to Walmart, you know, and buy a green screen and put it behind a kid or behind yeah. you, and you can be anywhere in the world. Right. You know, doing right. news broadcast. You know, I, you, you just learned about the Battle of Gettysburg. I want you to do a live from the field report of the Battle of Gettysburg. You know, it's just, can you have kids write a written three-page report? Yes. Or can you have them create something digitally to, you know, express what they've learned? Mm -hmm. Because not all kids are writers. You know, some kids are creative and like to use video or whatever, and they can do it all on their phones now, some of them. So, yeah. Um, all right. Now, you've got in the, uh, in the other room, in the control room, we have you set up with, mm -hmm. um, now you use a program called GIMP, which is GIMP. like a yeah. free version of, of Photoshop. It is Photoshop for free. And the reason why I did that, and I think you asked me before, is because the, um, I always work with teachers, and most of the teachers that I worked with couldn't afford Photoshop. So okay. I've always found a free version, you know, like DaVinci Resolve or OpenOffice. You know, there are free versions of software out there that you can use that'll do what you want. So I've right. used GIMP forever, and it's just been, um, you know, available, and it's easy to use and easy to learn, whereas Photoshop has a little bit steeper learning curve. So I use GIMP, G-I-M-P. And uh, so anybody can get that, and, and it has all the power of Photoshop. I was actually surprised. Like it's got everything that Photoshop has, yeah, pretty it much, seems, yep. right? Yeah. All the, especially, I mean, unless you're an advanced graphic, you know, editor, there's some features that it doesn't have, but you can also get, um, they call them plugins yeah. for, for GIMP that will allow it to expand the functionality of it. Okay. So, but for the most part, you can just go download the file and it's pretty simple right out of the box. Well, so what we're going to do is have you go over into the other room and you're going to you're going to actually be controlling the visual the part visual. of the show from <laughs> this part out and people are going to be able to see uh, yeah. just how you do it. Now, we what what's the photo that we're going to do? It's that famous photo of the disemboweled soldier. Yeah, I can show you that one. I brought a couple different versions. So, you know, I think it's But the, but the, but you're going to you, you're going to show us layer by layer how you colorize. A photo. Th that's the photo that you're going to do, right? I can do that yeah. one. I can yeah. do that one. I can do the I brought the gatehouse. I brought the three um, I think the the, the disemboweled one, not to be graphic, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> but I think because we've all seen this picture and it's kind of, in the black and white version, and and you know when you see like copies of it, and they're mm -hmm. not like the high res versions, it's kind of hard to make out what's going on. Right. But now you're using you're starting with a high res version. Yeah, I'll show you how to grab those. Right. And then you're you're adding many layers to it. You know, it's not just one button that you click. It's it's 
many different layers that you add. Right. So if you, I have if I have a, the color, um, if you have a line of soldiers, let's just say, you know, Union soldiers, each of their coats, uh, their sack coats or frock coats would have a different hue of navy blue. Right. So, you know, you have to look at each one individually and what would their color of their coat be? And is it more worn? Is it an officer? So the officer's coats tend to be a little darker, darker than, yeah. than, the, than the enlisted men. So looking at those types of things, you know, like... Can generative AI colorize a photo? Yes, absolutely. But this is like, I call them like adult coloring books. Yeah. <laughs> just spending time coloring images, you know what I mean, to, to do it uh, kind of relaxes. I mean, you know, as you say, it would frustrate you. <laughs> it would. It would. I would rather actually take a colored pencil and color in a, you know, a coloring, a coloring book <laughs> or paint a picture. But right. yeah. So, the, you know, those are the kinds of subtleties that you can get into um, and looking at it. The other cool thing is that. Sometimes when I post them online, I'll get historians or I'll get experts that'll say, no, this is, this should be this. Mm -hmm. So I'll get some feedback and they'll say, you need to change, you should change it. Not you need to, you, need you to, should. Yeah. You know, I posted one of some dead soldiers. I think it was probably the Rosewoods and they're like, no, they would have been dead X number of days. Their bodies would have been darker, you know, the because of yeah. the decomposition right. and um, uh, whatever the I'm blanking settling out. of blood and oh, all yeah. that rigor mortis and all that they said it would have been the blood would have been darker and i was like okay that makes sense thank mm -hmm. you for your, this guy's you know an emt kind of thing and you know so i, I can under i can appreciate that feedback but it to me <coughs> when i see a, a very well done colorization of a historic photograph all of a sudden that history that event those people are real to me Mm -hmm. And and maybe this is just because my brain is is simple and it's not a very complex brain. But you know, I've always looked at history as almost like as if it didn't happen, like a fairy tale. You mm -hmm. know, um, they're good stories. These people are interesting. They have interesting stories to their lives, and we look at their pictures. But they're not real to me because none of them smile. They're, we don't see them in ways that we are used to seeing people now. And, you know, they're posed, they're sitting there, they look like a statue. Right. And while I know that they were real, I know that they existed, it's not until I see them as my eyes see life, color, that I finally go, wow, that really was a real person. And look, his hair is more auburn than it is right. brown. Right, it looks, it looks different in auburn or whatever, or you're doing... Um, like I, I Joe Hooker is a good example with the blue eyes and the red hair. When you see him colorized, it's like, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the... Um, um, or you're doing one and you see uh, an officer and you realize he has a wedding ring on. So yeah. you start thinking about his wife right. and his family that he might have back home and, yep. you know, little things like that that start to get you to think about it. Or you go across one and they'll have a tear in their pants or something. You know, how did, right. that, how did that happen? You, right. know, you start to think about those types of things. Yeah. You They're know, more noticeable in color. And yes, they are. All right. So let's have you walk in the other room here. I got okay. a little walking music for you here. <laughs> and uh, as he goes over and gets the computer ready, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, this is part of our fall preview season. Uh, go over to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. And become a first lieutenant to see this stuff all the time because uh, once we go on Christmas break, the fall preview season is over. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, you in there, uh, Dr. Jim? Let me turn your yeah. mic up. There you are. Switch the screen capture. All right, here we go. So we're going to switch over to screen capture. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, now. There you go. I know there's so many. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. well, so I wanted to show some examples. I did bring some examples. Let's start with that. All right. Um, so these so are finished products. These are finished products in no particular order. Okay. Um, so these are from a while ago. Some of these are from a while ago. Some of them I've updated. Um, this is uh, Captain Hoft, Hoff, who um, has, this is over um, across from the, across from the uh, gatehouse, the, of the, at the Evergreen Cemetery over in that area is where this where his camp was. Okay. Huh. So across. Yeah, and this is the backside of his camp. Oh, okay. I think I I think I see. Oh, that must be the old farm lane. It, what are those trees? Do you know where the, those trees it's, are? Again, right there across. It's at the base of um, right by the past that old museum and where. Um, yeah. 
Over in that area. So those the, trees would be behind the museum? So yeah, that's basically, Culp's, that's Hill, Culp's in the, Hill. In the background, yeah. Yeah, all right. I know where that is. So that farm lane that they're in front of uh, is no longer there, but I think... I think I know. Right. At one point, I think someone had said that they had found the rock formation that was in there. Yeah. You know, so, again, probably uh, um, I'm going to defer to Frasinito on that one. And whose camp was this? As uh, Captain Hoff. Hoff. Of the what? He was like a sanitary or commis oh, okay. commissary kind of thing. Got it. So this one was interesting. Obviously, again, the, the Meads, or Lee's headquarters. Mm -hmm. um, I played with the roof on this one. And... Um, like, if I ever had to do it, I'd go back and redo this one. But the roof color, they were saying that there would be more moss on it. So Tim Smith had actually given me feedback on this one and said, no, it wouldn't be gray. It would be more like green and browns of his of the roof of the house. Now, to, how would they know that? How do they um, know there's more it, moss on it? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you based can kind of see Based on material and stuff. Oh, because it's, 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 shing it's like wood shingles? Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. God. So, See, that's the thing, and this is why I argue with Pete Carmichael that I am not indeed a historian, because I, I, you, you got to think of all that stuff. Right, I am not a historian. No, me neither. <laughs> you I mean, know. you got to think all those little things. I mean, well, I mean, not every historian needs to think that stuff, but I think the good ones, like like Tim, like they that they think that way, and that's right. why they're good. And that's their job, too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is um, all over now. This was in um, Plum Run. In Devil's Den area, base of. Now, how did you um, decide on the colors to use? Now, let, let me ask, wait, before we go into that, are the rocks all still in black and white? or did so the, Yeah, that's a good question. Some of them are, and some of them are not. Okay. Because um, the, the hardest part for me personally, and I'm sure there's a way to do it, is to take something that's black and white and gray already and make it gray. <laughs> Make it a different gray. Make it a different gray. It's so, like you got to add blue to it. That's or correct. That's yeah. that's actually that's perfect. And oh, like, really? When you say that, yeah, you got to add a blue tinge to it. Mm -hmm. So, and you can see um, above his head there, there's some browns and greens that yes. the moss growing on it. But. Yes. And the water. How about the water? The water is again muddy or black. You know, at that point, right? So a darker color. Interesting. So there's the gateway of the Evergreen Cemetery. Now that's nice. Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, the brick is actually orange, and I did have a historian, you know, take me out, tell me that that was a that was a good choice of color on that one. I think the greens, again, I've done these for over the years. I've gotten a lot better since then. But like the greens and the brass of the of the wreaths and that, I could probably tone down a little bit. Mm. Hmm. Uh, this is the seminary. Pretty famous. The, the, the interesting about this one, there's a lot of cool details in the background along that back fence back there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like there's a, a guy holding a drum and there's like up in the upper. Oh, really? Above his hat, like up in this area. I don't know if you can see my mouse moving or not. Oh, um, wait, hold on. Now I'm behind. I don't know. For some reason, I'm not, I'm seeing only the slideshow on the monitor out here. I'm not actually seeing the show anymore. Um, but I think it's because you're in that program. Oh, okay. Yeah, but go ahead. All right. Um, so this is the this is Meade's headquarters, obviously. So this again, you can clearly see the rocks I struggled with. Right. <laughs> I mean, that kind of looks cool, though. I like that look of, uh, um, uh, you know, like when when a when a uh, when a picture is colorized, like only certain colors are brought out. Right. Um, I think that kind of looks cool. So this is a more modern version. I just like literally just a few weeks ago did this one. Um, this one is actually 1903. This one was taken. So this is taken from, oh, this is taken like out in the yard. Yeah, this is yeah from the yard. Yeah, okay. So I just, I, this one here is really new. So like the north, uh, the southwest corner of her house mm -hmm. is where you are. Yeah. Okay, got it. Or where it is. So Alfred, Alfred Wode. Now, so doing flesh tone. Has to be difficult as well. Yeah, so that's that's really hard, and you get different tones. And then, like, would their face be dirty? Would it be clean? Yeah. Um, so again, we're here. Would they be tan? Tan. Um, Are there any ways, like for example, a tan, uh, even in a black and white photo, would that be obvious that you know this person has a sunburn? Um, a sunburn, probably not. But like dirt and stuff like that, or whiskers, you can see. Okay. Um, when you get close up. Sure. And that's why you have to start with high res. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my 
one of my favorite ones that I did. This is, I, I do like this one. This is a neat one. Yeah. Um, I want to print that out and hang it on the wall. <laughs> like, I really love that picture. I'll email it to you without my logo on it. Oh, you can put your logo on. I'll, I'll hang it on the wall here. Okay. Um, I think it's the 114th, but somebody can correct me. Okay. I think it's the 114th Pennsylvania Zoo Elves. Um, but a lot of fun doing it and researching the colors of their uniforms and asking people who are um, reenactors of, you know, of that group. No, is this, what, do you remember where this was taken? Is this down in the wilderness area? Or? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Oh, no. They, would they have been wearing the Zouave uniforms and that late in the war or they've scrapped that? Uh, again, uh, I'll defer to the historians. Yeah. I just sort of like to Someone do. watching right now. Right. Um, you know, a lot of this, not a lot, like this particular image, uh, not so much, but uh, others are a lot of artistic interpretation or artistic license. Sure. So this is John Burns. This is the first time I did it, and you notice, like, I didn't do a very good job. This was like one of the really one of the first ones I ever did. And, and I don't like the color of his pants and his face. And he looks really kind of weird looking. So then I always said I wanted to go back and redo it. So I went back and much better, much cleaner, much more detail in his hands. You can see the dirt in his hands. And um, I think somebody at one point had discovered that those are flies on his pants. And yes, I, I think... Uh, I don't know if Gary and Tim discovered it, but I know that I learned that detail from Gary and Tim. Yeah. All those little black, well, not maybe all, but most, a good chunk, let's say, of those little black specks all over the picture are flies. Because again, this was taken after the battle. Right. Um, and uh, the one of the details that the civilians have left behind is that there were swarms of flies. Just a, a ridiculous right. amount of flies around here. And and that makes a lot of sense. Right. And like on this one, like somebody had told me that the pants colors were wrong and whatnot. And I just, I always wanted to redo it. So I finally went back and did it. And I'm, I'm so, really, I'm happy with that one. So the current slide is more, is closer to uh, what the, what the colors would have been? Yeah. No, those aren't denim pants yet. Cause they didn't have denim yet. Did right. They? Or did they? I don't know the answer to that either. I always thought that jeans came more with the westward expansion. With, yeah, Wrangler yeah. and Levi, Levi right. Strauss. Right, Levi Strauss. So this one was a, a quote-unquote commission piece. That's <laughs> another good one, though. Yeah, so um, Scott Fink and Dustin Heisey asked me to do this one. Oh, yeah. Um, because they were doing some research into the location of this photo. Okay. Out on the Rose Farm. So they asked me to do this one. And my understanding, I, I think Tim had pointed out that there, you can read the headboard right here. Maybe Scott had done that, too. Uh, you can read the... Are you uh, able to zoom in on that as Not it this is particular now? one. If okay. I had the original, yes, you could. Mm -hmm. um, so again, more Rosewood dead. So you, I, I mentioned earlier about um, the rigor mortis and stuff like that. So right. you can see the dark. You have to make it darker because of the way his body is. Ugh. Just from the discoloration. I it have just, trouble sometimes doing the dead bodies because it, it just it's really it gets to you after a while. I, you know, I was going to ask you that because uh, I was imagining if I were doing it and I'm zooming in on this dead guy's face over and over again to colorize it or something, and it's suddenly I'm seeing a person. I'm not seeing some, you know, image of a what I know is a dead human body, but I'm detached from it. You know, just yeah. by looking at it, but then, but as you zoom in and you work it's on it night tough. after night, yeah, I bet it is. It really is because that's somebody's son, right? You know, and those are the stories, right? Yes. So here's another one. Um, I did this one really early on, and it's terrible. I mean, like I hate it. I never liked the grass, and I never liked the colorization of it. Um, it almost looks like it was taken at a reenactment, like yeah, modern day. Or, <laughs> I always thought that the the soldiers looked like they were almost green screened on top. <laughs> You know, and right. like, it's really bad. Yeah. Know? But so then I went back and after I got a lot better at it. I yeah, that's this. much better. And, um, you know, colorized I, it. And it well, and, and it's it's desaturated. It's it's a more believable. Right. This is much photograph. more believable than than, than yeah. you know, my original attempt. Although that's how your eye would see your eye would see more brilliant colors. But that to me is a better photograph. Right. So it took some time. Again, but again, you're doing all of these dead bodies and these bloated faces and disfigured faces. It's yeah. Terrible. And then, of course, we got this one. Now, this is the one that we're going to, quote unquote, work on. Yeah, I'll show on. you how to work on. Yeah. I'll show you how the layers on this one works. Okay. But, you know, looking at the insides of his... Uh, of his chest cavity. Well, yeah. that's that's what I'm saying. Is like in the black and white photograph, you really can't make out anything. But when you colorize these, suddenly it's a totally, a totally different, different story. Thing, yeah. yeah. 
So um, this is one of the Harvest of Deaths. I saw this one. Someone else had colorized this one, and yep. I saw this one. Yep. Um, so here's another one that I did early on. Uh, of course, the famous three Confederate soldiers. Now um, that's so. This has always been an interesting photo to me because where where we believe, uh, as I understand it, where we believe this is taken from uh, is up on Seminary Ridge, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. And and so you're looking that that's what it, if you stand in the spot where they where they think that the photo was taken. There's a I believe a plaque there. It's a yeah. The plaque is across the street. Okay, across the street. There's, um, a, there's a white house there on the corner. I don't know the name of the house, but yes, and there's a plaque right there in the front of that. It says that across the street, this photo was taken. Right. Okay. So um, if you were to go and sit there or stand there and look out to see that view, you won't see that view because the town now is in your way. It's expanded out. But that's what it would have looked like. And when you think of the retreat of the first corps and everything like that, right? Um, you know, that's where they were retreating over. It's it's not like today. If you tried to retreat from the seminary <laughs> today, you would have a much harder time. Um, and they had a hard time to begin with, but you would have you would have a much harder time than they did back then. Also, when you think of the Iron Brigade and and uh, Cutler's Brigade um, coming onto the field by cross lots, by taking uh, going across the field instead of coming up into the town, those fields over the shoulder of uh, you know the guy on the right um, are probably where they came up, and so you can see. All right, yeah, because the seminary is like off to his right, off to the right, yeah. yeah. So you can see that um, it's a lot easier to make out. But if you look over the shoulder of the guy on the left, you see a really tall thing. Right, um, that's the that's the, that's that's the, the poplar tree. Oh, I thought that was the National Tower. No, that's the poplar. No, I'm just that's kidding. I know, is it there? Yes, that's the poplar tree. Now, my question is: that still the? Because there's a really tall tree across from the gatehouse it on is cemetery. Not, okay, no. so that tree is not there. The tree is not there. But that 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 is Cemetery Hill. Correct. That's directly across the street from the gatehouse. Right. There are tall trees directly across the street from the gatehouse now, but not that specific tree. And so, so that gives you an idea there. That's Cemetery Hill. Uh, that's the Lee, the the hill that Lee wanted him to take. Uh, you know, the heights beyond the town, right. if practicable. <laughs> uh, that's so, it there. All right. So again, this was my original version. I don't know. Now, what's going on with the guy's face in the middle? I can't see. It's, is blur. it, it's, it's blur. It's blur. It's a it's a defect in the original uh, glass plate. Oh, okay. So then this is a re, uh, my updated version that I did. I don't know, but you can see I did a much better job on the grass in the background. Yeah. And the logs. Whoops, sorry, I went the wrong way. And the logs are better. So I just got better at the process as we do with anything. You know, get better at colorizing. And sure. I mean, I think it's 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 almost a miracle that you could add color to it and have it look somewhat in any way realistic. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's hard. Yeah. So, I mean, I like the, the first one we were looking at, you know, I like that. I'm just impressed that you were able to do that. Go, go back to that first one. If you don't mind. Oh, uh, that one. Yeah. That one there is the detail that you could see in the background, which is there in black and white. But when you colorize it suddenly, even if you get the colors wrong, you know, it's it suddenly, different to me now it's mm. it's again it's real and even if you get the color of the wood a little off it in the jackets or whatever it's still more real to me these these look like real people the guy on the left you know his face to me is such a modern looking face he looks like a country music star when you look <laughs> <laughs> closely at his face you know and but these these are real confederate soldiers they walked all the way up here and fought in this battle and got captured and you know it's amazing to me it's just fascinating. Yeah, so even adding, you mentioned marching, you know, the little details of adding dirt to their boots. Yep, yep. So they're not like strictly black and that sort of thing. Exactly. All right, what else? So that's got? a better one. Um, this is Brady out on McPherson's Ridge, first yep. day. Now so the interesting famous thing. pond, if yeah, you will. Yeah, that pond. Now the part of the pond is still there. Correct. Um, but they put the road over the rest of it. <laughs> For some reason. <laughs> so... It's, uh, you know, if you're ever wondering where the hell's this pond, well, it's it's there. It's there. It's right around the 150th. The road, right. The road goes right by where he's standing, I think, is how that works. Yeah, I think so. And that's McPherson's Woods in the background there. Yeah. Okay, so, so this these is, guys. This is a wounded wounded zoo off. Hmm. Some of these, like, I saw other people, like, post them, and then I'm like, I want to do that. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't And then um, Antietam. That's a nice one too. Now, is that 
partially black and white and partially no it's all it's all color yeah because of the grass and the green you know the greens and the grass came out really differently yeah so i like that one. that's another hanger that's a good one yeah i was like this one you know so you mentioned about flesh tones and things like that so like this is an older gentleman so you got to get some blues and reds in his hands and his face a little sure. bit because of his age he's graying yeah <laughs> and liver spots right yeah, that's that's essentially correct. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. So then you can also take um, images, the black and white images from um, Harper's oh, Weekly. Yeah, yeah. And colorize them. So this is that's neat. Um, Christmas Eve. This is one of the first representations of Santa Claus. This is a, by Thomas Nast. So you can see the wife on the left, and yeah. have the picture of the dad up there in the corner, and then the dad on the right looking at pictures of his kids who are sleeping far away. Wait, where's Santa Claus? Uh, in the upper left-hand corner. I need glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Santa and his reindeer. In the reindeer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just looking for Santa himself. I see it now. Yep. He's up there in the upper left. And then okay. in the upper right, you have Santa delivering presents to the to the troops. Oh, that was nice of him to think of the troops. Right. Yeah. yeah. So... <laughs> But that is cool. So that was not colorized. That was not colorized. And I decided I was like, so I got, I do a lot of the images and I thought, well, this should be working too. That's pretty nice. Yeah. So then this is one of the original Harper's Weeklies. This is uh, Santa visiting camp. So these colors, I would, if I went back and did it, I would tone it down a little bit, just really bright, kind of cartoonish. But Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a drawing. It is. So I, I kind of like it though. It's not bad. It's not bad. Don't beat yourself up, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. All right, cool. So, so now, example. so now let's like uh, let's go and 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 do, we'll go into the uh, lost my mouse, eviscerated so. guy. Well, I want to show you real quick before oh, yeah. we get to that. So to find these images, the, just to start, you have to go to the Library of Congress. So right. Andy actually just asked that question: Where can we find these? Because so the, these are amazing. Oh, are, well, he wants to know your finished. Where can we get the finished product? We'll get to that at the end. Yeah. But go so, ahead. So I have them all on my website and. And Facebook page usually. Mm-hmm. So, um, but anyway, selected photos of the American Civil War, the glass and negatives prints. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go in here and you just uh, Gettysburg. And I'm going to do the battle because then it'll like, kind of narrow it down a little bit. So, yeah. So here you can get all of these photos. And there's the John Brown one, John, John Burns, excuse me. <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> I always do that. <laughs> so you click on this image and you can see you get um, different versions. Blow this up a little bit. Does that help? It helps, yeah. So you get different versions of this photograph. So you can get a JPEG version, which is 90 kilobytes. Or you can get this TIFF version. TIFF stands for Tagged Encapsulated File Format. And it's 96 megabytes. That's the file that you want. Yes, the bigger the better. The bigger the better. And I used to have a hard drive full of these images. Like I had thousands of them. Um, I've gotten away from that, but... (laughs) Um, that's the version that you want because that's the version will let you zoom in and access them and manipulate them without getting that grainy pixel mm-hmm. pixel pixelization, pixelization, right? And that's that's important. And I think the other thing that you need to point out is that you've got to have a computer that's got some power. You really don't. Actually, you don't. No, you don't. Because every time I use one that doesn't, I mean, even the power, the computer that you're on there, mm-hmm. or actually this laptop that I use here, right? Mm-hmm. I bought it. You know, like with with balls, because like I basically look for a gaming computer because I was going to be doing a lot of video and audio editing. And even with this thing, I, I find limitations. And now the one that you're on there Some has... Some of it's RAM. Yes. So if I recommend, I and mean, again, you need hard drive space and you need RAM. Right. You know, so if you're working on a very complex photo with hundreds of layers or dozens of layers even it, it will slow your computer down but i do this on my mac laptop all the time with oh, well max issue. are i think a little better for that <laughs> Macs are better for everything no they're not <laughs> <laughs> so this it's huffed h-u-f-t captain huffed okay um so that's the one that that photo you can see that i showed earlier yes but you can, again, you can find all of these photos and you can download them. And this is what, again, historians like to do and people talk about it a lot. And I've been doing showing for years, taking this photograph and grab this, this version right here, this TIFF 97 megabyte file, and it will allow you to zoom in on it and not have any pixelization. Yeah. 
So. And it's real, and not only that, but you can really see a lot of detail even in the background in a lot of these pictures. Yeah. So, I'm, you don't realize. I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, I, you don't. People, I don't think they realize. They don't think they give the technology of the day enough credit um, because the detail that are in you. Everybody thinks you got to have like a really souped up digital camera to get a lot of detail in your photos and everything like that, but. It's not the case. It's really surprising. Yeah. You know, and you that they would be able to do this. Yeah. And if you can get a high res scan of it, you really can take yeah, advantage really of it. Really good, yeah. All right. So now you're in your editor. Yep. So um, this is GIMP. This is GIMP. You can use Photoshop if you have it. If you have another one that you use where you could do multiple layers, you know, whatever. But we're using GIMP here. And um, this isn't in a tutorial on how to do one of these on GIMP. It's just the principles of it. We're showing you the principles and just how it's done um, so that, you know, you understand that a lot of work goes into these things. And maybe if you're one of these people that sees an image like this online, you go, wow, that's cool, and then you steal it for something. <laughs> you think, like, just let's look at all the work that goes into right, it. So a long time ago, I never put my logo on it or anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, now you got it. Now I got to do it, right? So I, I'm just in GIMP, and this is the, uh, the dead Confederate soldier in the Rosewood, as we're all familiar with. Um, and just to show you that you can zoom in on this, I just grabbed, this is just the zoom tool, and I can, you know, go in and look at mm. literally. Good God. You know. Look the, at that. The wrinkling of his Oh, my God. And whatnot. You know, like one of your podcasts shows you talked about not liking to talk about death and gore, and here we are. I know. Well, you can't avoid it. You know, or this go, is the show. Just out of my. You know what I mean? That you can look at oh and get the detail on, and but it. Again, you must have that large file. Right. Or it won't work. I mean, that now I know originally this was uh, listed as um, a victim of a, of a artillery round to the gut. Correct. Um, I wonder if it's because that shell is laying there. Yes, it is. That was the reason why they said that. Okay. That this is a prop that was used. This musket is a prop. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So how do we know that? Because the same musket can be seen in multiple images. It's also in the sharpshooter image because it's missing the the ramrod and everything. It's a problem. <sighs> wow. I see that again. You, you also have to be like a detective to be a historian. Well, that's, you know, like I, it's one of the things I like to do with kids too, you know, be like, like CSI Gettysburg yeah. from years ago. It was one of my first lessons that I, I, I developed. It was CSI Gettysburg. You know, you're dropped in the Rosewoods, and these are your photos that you have, and what do you think happened here? And, right. You know what I mean? You can be a detective and say, how was this guy killed? You know, your first conclusion is that this, but then you realize, well, where does arm go? He's missing his arm. You know what I mean? Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Is that? And he's missing his arm right here. But am I looking at his uh, shoulder joint? Yeah. Holy crap. And oh, can, my God. Not to really gross you out, but there's his face that's well, all distorted. Well, I was going to ask you, please move up to the face, because I've always wondered what's going on there. Where? There's his nose. So that's his nose. That's okay, his that, mouth that's all distorted, that, and his eyeball that's bulging out. That's what I thought. Oh, my God, that poor guy. Yeah, right. So, the, But you also, in the same image, you get to look at the details of his cat box right there. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, <you> don't care. <laughs> there's his hand. There's his hand. Now, so now we believe now that he was eaten by hogs. Correct. Oops. And if you can, and, and not to, you know, and for anybody watching that can't handle this stuff, you might want to turn it off because I'm going to ask him to zoom in <laughs> on his abdomen, abdominal cavity. Um, right, because so then I'm, you get into anatomy, like, what part of the body is that? Right. Is that his liver? What <laughs> right. is that? No, yeah, they would have eaten the liver. I don't know. Now, or, or is that a rock or something? Like, No, I think it's a body part. You think it's a body part? Yeah, a a body, lung, definitely. perhaps? It could be. I'm not a So, doctor. but we're looking in his... Which, you know, it's really interesting. You see Go ahead. Don't but, shy away from it there, Jim. <laughs> this is about learning. We're, we're, we're learning, learning anatomy and everything. You, you've had doctors on your show. I know. <laughs> I wish I had one on right now. to. to so this is like the, his belt or something that you can see coming oh, across wow. here. Yeah, you yeah. You can really get in. And maybe but you can also see like there's weeds and dirt and stuff. So, but that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, but what you also am can, I looking at? When you get down at? here, there's some destruction, like. Down in here, you can see in high resolution, like right in here, there's definitely something was going on. I can't. Can you zoom in on that? No, I can like center screen it. There you go. 
So see how it's like it tore out of his pants here? Can you go closer? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Because I know you want to go closer. Because I'm trying to figure <laughs> out. what. I'm... All right. What am I looking at here? And like This is like it would have been his right hip area. Okay. So they've eaten down into the hipple region. That's a that's a that's a technical medical term. term. Yeah, <laughs> the hipple region. <laughs> and there's his wrinkled hand. Again. Now, so his his hand is what's the most amazing part to me. That is the most humanizing part of it, right there. Those right. wrinkles in his knuckles, and also you can see the um, like dehydration of the flesh. It's kind of it kind of looks like a deflated balloon wrapped around his finger bones. All right. So you know you figure this this. Gentleman was killed on July second ish, mm -hmm. you know, and he may have not perished and gotten, you know, eaten or whatever. July third evening, July second, July third. You know, this photo was taken four or five days later. Yeah, you know, so mm. he's been laying out in this field in the sun and the rain, and I mean, just the the photographers, man, they had to put up with that. The yeah, the stench and everything. I can't. It's hard to imagine. So then, now that, look, look, think of that shoulder joint. That is something else. That is amazing. So, so you know, you go back to, okay, what actually ended up killing him? Was it, you know, did he, you know, why is it, his face is all distorted, obviously, from being out in the elements for a couple of days, but he lost his arm, he lost his hand. And yeah. What actually ultimately killed him? I mean, There's the, a bullet hole in the canteen. Right, and, and and the canteen is not a prop as far as we understand? Uh, not to my knowledge, I don't believe so. Okay, so the, the musket is a prop and the, the I mean, the shell, is, I the mean, shell, look at it, it's yeah. leaning up against a rock. I right. mean, of course it's a prop. But like, uh, now the interesting detail about that musket is it's missing its ramrod and the sharpshooter one is missing the ramrod or, or do we right. not see the ramrod? I guess we do. Right, no, it's missing it as well. So... It's like Brady's assistant. He shows up in a bunch of photographs. It's kind of like this prop shows up. In right, right. But so, no, so they're using these props in a bunch of different... So there are a lot mm. of... Maybe not all, of course. I don't think, aside from the musket and the... Uh, uh, well, everything that we've identified right. as props here, I think, you know, it's obviously the body is not staged. So this is... Um, yeah, let me just show you another level of detail with these large images. So this right. is the I'm famous... going to adjust... Keep talking. I'm going to adjust the monitor so I can see it better. Okay. So this is um, the gatehouse of the Evergreen Cemetery. This is Brady's assistant that I was just talking about. Um, and so that I always like to say that this guy right here is a soldier. You know, this soldier. You can just barely see him in the raw image, but the advantages of having these large um, files that don't distort is that you can really zoom in on this guy. Yeah. So you can start to make some assumptions. I like to do this when I do presentations. I talk to him like. How tall is this guy? Is he tall, short, young, old? So you asked me before, what's my bag? My bag is showing kids this picture and saying, tell me this kid, right? Write this, you know, write this kid's letter home after the battle. He's on guard duty. Is he young? Is he old? Mm. You know, his breastplate is up here on his shoulder. It should be in the middle of his chest. Mm. You know what I mean? His coat is ill-fitting, which isn't uncommon, but his musket comes up to his nose, so he's not... Exactly not, that tall. Not a tall guy. Not a tall guy. You know, so you can make some assumptions. Do we know how tall a musket is from uh, butt to uh, muzzle? I, I used to know. I don't know anymore. Go ahead. I'll look it up. You look it up. Well, <laughs> don't you have one laying around here somewhere? <laughs> at home. <laughs> um, but, you know, you get the idea that like, this guy can do this. You can also zoom in on the on this guy over here and look at, like, you can even see this guy's suspender. 56 inches. Okay. How many feet is that? <laughs> Divide by 12. Um, <laughs> so this is, you know, again, Brady's assistant, obviously wearing um, a different clothing than the soldier. But if you come over here to the left of this building, you can see the stove in here. Oh, wow. I think it's a stove. I mean, obviously yeah. it looks like a stove with the... With the no, yeah, you can see the pipe in the back. Right, the pipe here. And, and then, then the, the two, two uh, burners. Yeah. But you could pop off to put the skillet on. And there's all this debris... Right here. Wow. So, you get, so that's you get four, an idea. four foot six inches. Is right, 50 so, so he's what five foot? Maybe? Five. Yeah, yeah, he's a short five guy. Two. He's a short guy. The Joe Pesci of the Civil War. Right. Uh, With all due respect, as Mr. opposed Pesci. to the, was a guy from Indiana was the tallest one or something like that. Right. Um, but you know, you get kind of get the idea that you can zoom in and out on these images, and you can spend hours just doing this. How about that structure over to the right? Um, is yeah, like this a one here? Corn 
What is that? I don't know exactly what it is. I, I'd have to go back and look at some research and um, to know exactly what it is, but it doesn't exist today. Right. The house sits there now. Is there anything interesting in the Debris uh, right behind that guy? Uh, not really, no. This is like a piece of canvas and just some wood. Hmm. Is that like a bed frame? Um. Oh, maybe. Like right here, I see what you yeah. mean. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's some kind of frame. Yeah. Yep. Huh. So that's a little stuff that, again, I haven't looked at this in a while, so that's a good catch. Thank you. Um, but it's always like that. You know, you're always looking and finding little pieces of um, information or little details that, like, oh, I never saw that before. Right. And then how about um, any battle scarring on the gatehouse? Um, there is, like, you get the window here that was shot out. Sure. You know, and you can see some bullet holes, like, like it looks like some scuffing here. Uh -huh. um, and then there's damage to this window. Uh, those windows are interesting. They have like, um, what do you call that? Shades. No, no, <laughs> no. I don't know. no, but it is interesting how that one shade is sucked out of the window. But no, if you they go to the upstairs windows, um, the the ornate. Um, oh, the, the, the up here? Yeah. The, yeah. Well, what do you call that? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't either. But like you would have that that like pewter, not pewter. What is it? Uh, like lead. Lead um, stuff like in a stained almost. glass window. Yeah. 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 But that's huh. there. That's pretty. All right. So to go back to why we're here. And you know, the other thing real quick though, uh, if you look at the doors on the inside uh, where the little uh, step up and uh, porch is, mm -hmm. now it's been a while since I've been through that gatehouse, but I think the pavement has built up quite a bit yeah it's, it's much higher now it's much higher now right a yeah. lot of that that's foundation that we can see is not visible anymore it's underground right. yeah even in the front wow that is cool yeah it's really cool it's really neat to just again and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these photographs and not just of gettysburg but other you know battles that you can just do this all day long yeah all right well let's let's, let's get let's one. get down to this one here now okay, okay so, so so show us go through the process here and if you need to um, maybe move me. Hold on, I'm gonna come over there and move me over so that people can see what's going on down there. Keep talking. Oh, okay. So the um, down in the lower right or on the right hand side, um, I'll let you do it. So basically, what you do is you decide what colors you want. <coughs> decide what colors you want, and then um, take that color and then make a layer of it. And then you erase the above layer to reveal what's underneath it. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a neat way to do it. To um, It's kind of like layering a sandwich or layering. Um, yeah, a sandwich is probably the best way to do it. Or if you remember when you were growing or when you were in school, the teachers would do that. Um, they take, they'd take an overhead projector and they put a slide down yeah, and put yeah. something on top of it and make another layer and then another layer. It's kind of like that. Um, the how teachers would do that sort of thing. You know. Better? Yeah, I mean, we don't need to look at me. So, <laughs> so down in the so in the right hand side um, of the screen, I have all the colors that I used for this particular image. I lost my mouse. Okay, sorry, I went too far. Um, so I have all the colors that I used for this. So if I wanted to just see the flesh, I can. I'll just reveal the flesh and you can see it's just the flesh cone tones that I that I used. Okay. And then um I, I can do the mud. I, I call it mud, like dirt. Okay, like the raw yep. ground. Um uh, we can add some leaves in, like I colored all of this in and picked the areas that I wanted it. And then of course I called it organs, you know, so you can get the organ. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> the guts. The guts, right? Um, then we get the dark blood and the uh, get a little color, mm. little color. Um, add some leaves in. So each one of these layers of the colorization is the colors are hand chosen. Um, the areas that you want to color that color are hand chosen, 
and it's all not all of it i mean a lot of it is again artistic interpretation so there's a good one you asked earlier about dead blue you know yeah <laughs> so if you had if i take this blue out here watch watch how it changes oh yeah too 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 pink too right. alive too, pink, too alive right so you go this and you add some blue to it and it yeah. really like okay now he's dead yeah he's pale yeah so um grass so I added the grass in because, you know, again, it would have been trampled. It would have been um, mm. his pants. I, you know, you can do butternut. I call it butternut. Okay. There and, you go. And his pants, you know, change his pants a little bit. Uh, what am I missing? So then I usually, to tone the colors down, I add a layer of just lightly colored black to just kind of. Yeah, that, right. That kills the saturation a right, bit. You, you know. know. Um, and the white on this case just pops out that rock right there yeah. a little bit. So that's what you do, but you have to take each one of these layers and then. So, okay. Two. So take them all off and go, go to the first layer that you added. So I always start with black. I don't black and white. I don't know why. Uh, but I'll take the black off too here in a minute. So why do you start with black on a black and white picture? Is uh, that too... Again, just colors. You know, there is a lot of black. Like his, his, you know, um, what you call it? His cartridge box is black. His shoes right. are black. Okay. Um, I don't know. I just always start. With so black even and on white. a black and white photo, when you colorize it, you still have to add black. Correct. Yeah. It's the gray that's really hard. That's the hardest part. Is getting the gray. Interesting. So, um, but you can take this and get the. If I want to color in white, you know, I can just come over here and grab my paintbrush and I paint it and then I just come over here and then I can like paint something in white. I got to um, change my um, my mode here. I'll show this how to do this from scratch here real quick in a minute. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's you just talked about mode. So yeah, when so you I'll show, give me one, I'll, we'll do the whole thing here. In go a minute. ahead. Go, I'll ahead. go from scratch, but you can kind of get an idea that now I can make his pants white if I wanted to. For so, some reason. So basically, um, I I paint and there's um, a technique called glazing. So like you take a very thin. Um, pigment and paint you know mm -hmm. you thin it down you'll have something like this let's say let's say i want to colorize this and I'll, I'll put i'll somehow get it on a canvas and then i'll go in and maybe glaze it and so i'll so what i'm doing is i'm i'm uh, uh what's the term i'm looking for i'm adding a not a hue i mean i'm adding hues but it's it's more it's a cast it's like a color cast over uh, the image. So I'm not right. coloring it with an opaque pigment. I'm coloring it with a translucent pigment. Yeah, this is called a mask. Right. So, so this one part on the right here is called a mask. It's a layer mask. Right. So that's what essentially what you're doing. You're painting over this with a mask or let's use like say you know, it's an opaque or something like that. So um, let me just go to this one real quick and then um, I have to change it to RGB. So if I take this image, the first thing you need to do is add a layer. Um, so you add a layer, and I'm just going to call it white. Okay. Just for so the heck of it. Always name your layers because you're going to get confused. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm used to having it on my computer. Um, layer. I'll do it the, the new layer, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I want to do that it's visible and change the color. And transparency, I want to be the foreground color. That's what I was looking for. Oh. Okay. So that's going to paint the whole thing over white. Okay. So then I right-click on it and then add that mask. And it's the same process if you want to use um, if you want to use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. It's the same It's the same thing. So right-click right, right on it and create a mask. Add a layer mask, and it's, um, it's a black full transparency. So then this white is going to go away. Okay. So now, essentially, what I want to do is paint this white. So the the white gate. I want to get the paint paint the gate white. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so I'm going to grab my um, paintbrush, and that's that's a little big. So I'm going to make it smaller. 
that's a good size right there. Um, change this mode to overlay or color. There's a couple different modes depending on what you want to do, but the best one that I you typically use is this overlay. Yeah. And then you just color. Interesting. And that'll colorize that by hand. I'm just kind of doing it really roughly here. Right, sure. Because also so, it like, looks like there's mud on the bottom. Right. So right? I'm just kind of really quickly just to say, I'm just going to do this. You know, like, I don't like it. <laughs> you know, and I do this sometimes. Like I'll just slap it on there. <laughs> But so you're it, slapping it, it on, but you're but you're you're not coloring within the lines. Correct, and you I mean you don't you you can you don't have to. Um, Interesting. It depends on okay. your own okay. preference. Mm -hmm. um, that you can just sort of play around with it. Like let's just say, like, so I'm over there. The other thing that you can do is change the like the opacity of it. Mm -hmm. So it's that's like really bright, you know. So I can come over here and I can change the opacity of that layer. Okay. And it'll make it. Okay, that's a little bit more like realistic what I like that color of it. Right. Okay. If I need to erase, like this is like like I went over right here. Um, first thing I'll do is probably zoom in. And then I change from white painting on white to painting in black. And then I just come right along here. And I can erase that. Oh. So like in here, I'm like it's just because like, again, I was I did that intentionally so I could show you how that I made yeah, a mistake, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, you can go back and correct mistakes. Of course, of course. The beauty of digital. The beauty of digital. <laughs> so, um, and that's how you, you kind of do that, um, and zoom out, and then you can like this guy's code, or you can pick the colors that you want. So if I want to add a new layer, um, so just add a new layer. First thing you do is you pick a color, and just pick you know whatever color I want. Um, I don't know, it's like a brick color, if you will. <laughs> and just call it brick. Hmm. And I can add that layer mask. Oh, so okay, so I think I see what you're doing. So then, you you add that color. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go over just the brick. Just the brick. And yeah. remove... The black and white. The black and white, I'm right. reveal the, the brick color. Yeah, okay. So you, what are you using, an eraser color. tool there? Or? No, that's a paintbrush. That's a paintbrush. It's a paintbrush. You paint in white and black and white. So, again, this is a wrong color, but you kind of... It's yeah, kinda but you the demonstrative the per, dem, demonstrative purposes. Um, hmm. And so you just, again, paint over it whatever you want. Um, you can change the opacity and the shades and you can use different brush tools if you want. Like for, if I'm doing, um, let me do it. I mean, I'll just show you. Um, let's pick a green and I'll do a tree. Um, let's get out here and get a green, like a tree, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, call it trees. And I name my people. Some people are like, why do you name it? And I'm like, it's because then I know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's you, a personal you deal preference. with dozens of these layers. You better name them. Right, and then I know I can go back and say, you know, like, so then um, you only ever paint in black and white. So you paint in white and you erase in black. So, like, you can come down here and I, I'll pick the vegetation. It's called a, it's actually called a vegetation um, layer, a mm -hmm. uh, paintbrush style. So make this a little bit bigger. And then... Um, you take this and then you can paint over it and it kind of gives a little bit more texture. I mean, this is the wrong color, but um, kind of bothers me. It's the wrong color. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you get the idea. And then, you know, it gives a different texture and then you can layer different greens in there if you want. Um, so if you have different color greens and different, because not every leaf on a tree is the same shade of green. So even in here, if I want to go back and and edit the green, I can turn on these leaves. And then I can change and add, um, oops, I'm on the wrong color. And then change and add more green into this image if I want to. So it kind of, you get it, see how like this green, like there's two different leaves. So I have leaf one and leaves two. Right. So like some of these leaves you can see because I only have this leaves layer turned on, like some of them are black, like are still gray. Whereas then I can come in and add another layer and see how it gives it that depth. And then I can also add, okay. because some of it you can see this light brown, some of the leaves might be dead, so I can add 
some brown in there to add dead leaves as well. Okay, yeah, all right. So you got to layer the colors and you got to think about what you're doing uh, a little bit. I, I was told when I started painting by a friend of mine who used to be an art teacher, he said that, uh, you know, we know, we say that trees are green, sky is blue, grass is green. But it's really not. <laughs> right, but it's not. It's really not. And that's the thing is, is yeah, there's green there, but it's shades of green. Correct. And there's shadows and there's highlights and there's midtones. It's not all green, flat green. Right. So the um, one of the things, I, I have a palette. Like I've created these over the years. Like in GIMP, excuse me, you can create palettes up here so that you have them already. So I've got... Hmm. I actually already have. I've got union blue colors. I've got greens. I've got you know, confederates. I already have them already pre-done. So okay. over the years, you can build your own palettes mm. of colors if you want um, to be able to grab them. Another trick that I learned, like this is this would be um, dirt. Mm -hmm. You can add dirt in here. So let's see how it, this sort of again comes to life. Yeah, it, it's amazing. You know, it really does, and. The, and you can adjust these and whatnot. Um, the other one I use a lot is this. I use smoke a lot. It's called smoke brush. Again, it just kind of like just ah uh, yeah kind of highlights it. So if I mean just do a control Z and take that out, so you can kind of see this is just smoke. See how it kind of leaves some of that. Yep. And then if I go in at another color, for lack of a better word, just pick green. See how you can get it comes through. Yeah. So you can kind of get the blend a good blend of those colors using the smoke. Huh. Now the like you can change the opacity of an entire layer or you can change the opacity of just a stroke. Now if you wanted to, let's say that patch that you're working on there, you wanted to really make that different from everything that surrounds it. And you're doing all this layering that you're not gonna do on the other ones, and you're using all these different colors that you've already got as layers. And you want to change the opacity of one or two of those layers, but that's also going to affect Everything else. Everything right? else that you colored with that layer, correct? Right. So what I am normally do, if I want to change just this layer, this little spot that I'm working on, I'll create a new layer of just that yeah. same color. So you got to have another layer in there. Correct. That's why you name them. That's why you name them. <laughs> dirt one, dirt two. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you get different. And again, like you just said, there's no multiple colors of dirt. One of the things that I get asked a lot is where do you find your colors or where do you come up with your colors? And this one's pretty easy. You can find images of the gateway cemetery and you can grab those right um off a website like soldier ones i get um like this guy's union blue there's a, you can get take reenactor photos and grab them um i follow a couple of authentic um reenactor clothing makers online okay like wamba and white i think is one of them and they post pictures of their wares so i grab them and steal the pictures of it so i can actually so if I um, well, you don't steal the pictures. I just don't steal the pictures. I use you, the pictures. You copy the I copy color. the image, right? So there's like, say they have wool, rebel wool. Mm -hmm. um, this is from the this here's here's an easy one to do. Um, this is from the Library of Congress. So this is like this one I can steal. I'm not steal. I can use this one. So I want to make his pants this color blue, right? Right. So I come into my color and I can just pick from the screen. I just pick this blue. So I know that's an authentic pair of pants and that's an authentic sky blue. Huh. So then I can create a pair of pants and call it sky blue. Hmm. And then I change that. It's this, and again, do Photoshop, whatever. It's the same process. Do you use one of those stylus? I have. Mouse pads? I have one. That would be easier, wouldn't it? It, it is easier if, if you can get the hang of it. And right. I, I don't have the patience to get a hang of it. <laughs> so the um, but you know, so now there you can actually see this is, you know, people ask me where do you get your colors from. Well, that one is from a pair of sky blue pants that, you know, from, from the Library of Congress website. So now what's interesting to me is that, um, so you took that color blue mm -hmm. and copied the color. And... But, but uh, you know, when I was looking at it, you know, it's got shadows on it. And it's got, it's not one flat color, but what you pick is one flat color. Right. So it actually, and I don't understand the technology of it, but it, it actually picks up the 
the shades of it. You mean when you copy it, it does, or when you're no, when you're when painting? You, when you're painting, it actually right. picks up. Like this is this is going to be brighter. See though, this because the sun is on yep, the side. Yep. But it's actually you can actually see it's brighter on that side. Well, so that makes sense though because you're painting over. It's a transparency. Right. So it's when you put that color onto the darker parts of his pants, it's going to it's going to show up darker because right. you're coloring a shadow. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. But yeah. that's 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 amazing. And so then those shadows are probably going to be accurate because you're using the color. Well, I shouldn't say accurate. Well, they're accurate to the color you're using, right. I guess I should say. Yep. So, you know, yeah. there you can see that's a pretty accurate color of sky blue. Wow. Now, do you do you do the skies themselves? Up here? Yeah. Um, sometimes. Like, I'll just do a really light blue. Like, I'll take this and do, like, I even I'll do a smoke kind of thing. Um um i'll do i'll do a smoke color like this i'll do it really large like see how big my cursor is and then i'll just drop the opacity really low and just kind of get a light just really light yeah color it's really faint it's very hard to very do. hard to see yeah but it gives just enough change and then i don't have a black on here but if you if you um, you can add a black and that'll change it as well. They'll darken it. They'll darken it a little bit. Yeah, there, that's a little easier to see. Yeah, it's still very faint. Very but faint, it's, but it's, it's subtle. It's subtle is the is the correct word. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but then I, I would imagine though that would be brought out more when you have all the other colors in. Right. It does. You know, yeah. when you make this and it pops and then you can see the background. But you know, like don't forget, you know. The, like, it's funny you can like I, I forgot this part back here and I don't make that blue. Yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> um, so that's just that's just what I do. And uh, you joking and say I'm, this is nice working on this on a lap, you know on a full size keyboard and a mouse. I do it with my MacBook laptop and pinch and zoom with my fingers. Yeah, that would drive me insane. I mean, I'm not even joking. I would have to be brought to an insane asylum yeah, if I had I did, to do it that yeah, way. I did buy a tablet and it's it's hard. It's it's hard to like where you lift your hand and put it down and. Yeah, I couldn't do that either. I would have to do it on a on a full like on a desktop, or at least if I was doing it on a laptop, I'd have to have a mouse or I'd have to have one of those stylus or something like yeah, that. Yeah, what's nice about this is you know the 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 zoom, you know, like I can roll their mouse to zoom in and out. Yeah, you know, I don't have to come yeah. over here and click 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 click. Yeah, that's annoying. I can roll their mouse in and out. <laughs> That'll definitely give you a carpal tunnel. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had that. <laughs> Been there, done that. Um, but that's some, that's pretty much what we do and how you do it. It's just I I find it so relaxing to be able to do, and um, to to be able to um, just share them, you know, online. It's something I do. Get some um, relaxing. So he, these are some some like some of the pictures. Like you know, there's wool that they posted you know, pictures of wool that I can grab colors of. That's so cool. Um, you know, like there's a whole line of it. Like, so if I open this up real quick, um, convert. So there's a whole list of wool that I can like pick colors from. And this is authentic, well researched by historians and by, you know, that this is accurate wool colors yeah. that Confederates would have worn. Do you, so you do you do commissions? Because somebody in the comments says uh, he has pictures of his grandfather from World War One and. <laughs> So um, I, I did love one to see of them the colorized. I, did, I um I have not done commissions. I I would be interested in seeing it. Um, I did one for my mother in law. Mm -hmm. uh, it was her father in his Navy sailor's uniform from World War Two. Mm -hmm. Um, I did do that one for her, but I haven't done like commissions. And you asked me one time, do you sell them? I'm like, I don't sell them. I don't just do them. You know. I think you should. Uh, now go if you go to the top of the archway. Okay. Uh, there's a oops. oops. There's an anomaly in the photo there. There's a yeah. Right. Do you remove those? I or do not. I leave them. You leave them. Okay. I, I know some people that do, um, and I've had people like, "Here's a correction. Here's one without the anomalies." I'm like, "Okay, thanks." <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, you know, I do that. So now, is that a hole in the? Uh, this one here's a hole. This is a damage. Yeah. Damage. That's okay. damage. Yeah. So like that particular one, I think this is my image. So you can go to here. If you want and go to images, oops, um, go to images.google.com and just type in gateway cemetery. I can't type. I'm coming into the water cooler to get more water. Okay. <laughs> you know, so here's a picture that you can grab of the actual cemetery. 
and then use this image and this brick color for your photo, for your reference. The other suggestion, if you're going to do that, I suggest that you go, um, if you click on, in your in give me in Google image searches, um, you click on tools and then go size and go large. So then it gives you the largest photo yeah. that you can grab. Always go large. Right. Um, go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you kind of get the idea. And again, you're not, so you, you're, you're using, this is from John Banks blog, but you can, Take this image. You're not selling it. You're not using it, so it's legal. You know, to, as a reference point. You're basically just taking a, a sample of the color. Correct. Right. Yep. So what I do, I don't, I don't, not even so much anymore. Um, there's a plugin you can get for Chrome uh, that'll allow you to grab colors from a page. Oh, well, that's cool. So they call them the, the hex colors, the hex code colors. There's a, there's a. So when you do this, I'm sorry, the like. White is all Fs, zeros, all zeros is black. Oh. So if I change the color to red, you see my number changes. Yes. So you get the hex code. So you can do that too. So if I go, um, my tab go. Yeah. The uh, if I go here and I type in um, butternut hex code, it'll actually give me. That's a color of butternut. And psych colorpedia. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. There's like, but I mean, you know, it's yeah, just color. like there's. Is there anything you can't do online? No, it's amazing. You know, so I can even do grass hex code, and it'll give me like that's a general code. So that's the number that I need to look up. That five six seven D four six. So if I take five six seven D four six, and I go over here, um, five four seven D four six uh, D four six. Hit enter. It's giving me that green. Wow. Wow, that is something. So that gives you a starting point. You know, like if I wanted to look at this brass and I don't know what to look for, you know, I can do old brass. Hex code. And it'll give me antique brass hex codes. <laughs> that's the wrong. That's not quite right. I was looking for a You're green. You're looking for that darker. I'm, I'm looking for a green, you know. Yeah. Right. So you can just go here and say, mm, I want a green. Um. You can do uh, green brass, or it's bronze, isn't it? Bron yeah. Old bronze, bronze, not brass. Right. That's right. I, I didn't know what you meant, but... Um, B-R-O-N-Z-E, hex code, and it's going to be a green. So there's your green. <clears throat> That's amazing. So little things like this. So that one even shows a statue. So um, Antique bronze. So that's the color right there, and you want to grab this hex code, 665.D1E, and put that into... Your program and then you can colorize these and get really close <laughs> that's something so oh i had another question we'll so, so if somebody wants head. to do a commission they can catch me through my website or facebook page and yeah so and the, the guy that asked it. about it says that he actually has the uniforms too so you oh, can, nice you yeah. can use the uniforms as, as period correct <laughs> yeah the one that i did when it was in his navy white so it was pretty easy <laughs> <laughs> right right so, okay, yeah, I was just going to say, let's go back to this guy here. So now, talking about grass, um, you've got different, well, greens, let's say greens, grass and trees, and we're talking before, that you have different shades of them, and here you can see, you've got different shades of green in mm -hmm. here, Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, you got to account for different things, like distance. In the distance, you know, all colors change in the distance because the more distance you have, the more atmosphere you have between the camera or the eye and the uh, mountains or, or the distance. Like, you, for example, you know, mountains are always painted in like a blue or a purplish or something like that. Purple mountain majesties. Like, we, uh, that's the atmosphere. If you go right up to the mountain, it's green. It's got all, it's dark. It's a dark color. Right. But you've got something in between you and the mountain that you're viewing at miles distance or whatever. You know, the other thing you have to look at, too, is like which way is the sun hitting them? Yeah. You know? oh, I was going to say that when we were at the at the gatehouse. You go back to the gatehouse for a sec and you, and zoom in on the soldier. Behind this. And and you were pointing out how the, his uh, right his right pant leg was going to be lighter because right. the sun's coming from there. And I, I said, well, this must be... Uh, late morning uh, that it was taken or early afternoon as the sun is in the southern sky. Right. Uh, because I, like, it's, I just, I, I, uh, 
Only because I just am obsessed with this place that I know where the sun is <laughs> in relation right, well, to know, these places. You know, and you, those are types of things that you can do. Um, you, and you know those types of things. I don't, if you will. Yeah, well, it's a little... It's when you spend too much time in one place and you don't go out into the rest of the world, that's what happens. <laughs> so, you know, this is, I thought it would be different for your, for your viewers and your listeners to, to kind yeah, of. Yeah, I, I think, I think they like it. The comments make it look like uh, people are uh, very interested in this stuff here. And uh, I certainly am. I think this is great. I, I, it's just a different way to view the battle, you know, it um, is, it's, it really is. And, you know, you can research and you can look at the black and white photos and you can say, oh, yeah, that's right. But then you can also come here and look at um, these images and look at the backgrounds. And so that would be a finished version of what we were just looking at. Yeah. And you could see the blue of the sky now. Yeah, you can see that. So you, I just got a little wisp of it and little whites. It's yep. Just, you know. Yeah, little clouds. Happy mm-hmm. little clouds. Happy little clouds. <laughs> I saw that on YouTube the other day. They were streaming 24 hours of pop rocks. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, you, you know, like, it's little things. In the Z- little, zoom in on uh, her house. I'm not sure I can from oh. here, but I can. I can oh, because this isn't. This uh, isn't the image. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, okay, so we have a question uh, about the soldier. Can you go back to him? Yeah. And I hate to do this, but yeah, zoom this in. Guy? Yeah, zoom in on the cavity. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Barbara asks, why did they think hogs ate him? <clears throat> from from my understanding, um, they think that hogs ate him because he's found in the area where they knew hogs were roaming around. Um, there's a story that, uh, you know, the, the Rose Farm had hogs. There was a hog pen near the house. Mm-hmm. And when the Confederates are coming over it, you don't go around the fence. You knock the fence down. And that means the hogs get out. And the hogs, uh, you know, I'm surprised, frankly, that they didn't kill him and save him for later. But whatever, you got to keep going. And so um, at the end of July 2nd, when the area of the wheat field um, and Rose's Woods or whatever are kind of a no man's land and it's just filled with dead and wounded. Well, it, that's a smorgasbord for the hogs. I and mean, there's an account of one of an officer beating back hogs with his, um, with his sword. sword. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he and he describes. Uh, I think there's a few accounts of people describing the sounds of the men being eaten alive by these uh, hogs because uh, they were too wounded to get away. They, they either shot through the legs or whatever the case may be that they could not get away, but they were still alive. And these animals come along, smelling fresh yeah, blood. So you've seen this image too. Um, this guy here has some damage as well. I, don't I didn't think download. I, no, the, I don't think I have seen this. Where is this? Uh, 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 again, I don't know whether it's actually been found. Dustin Heisey seems to believe this is also a rose farm. Okay. Him, him and Scott Fink also believe that this is a rose farm. I'm not going to confirm or deny, but he has. Can you open that in GIMP so we can zoom in more? Uh, let me download it real quick. Oh, I uh, thought you had that already. No, I didn't. I just went and grabbed it real quick. So anyway, Barbara, um, if, if you look at the cavity. Um, there, it's uh, it looks very neatly <laughs> eaten out. Yeah, um, and you, again, you can see like right through here, there's like some ripping and tearing. And yeah, it's just not conducive. Not conducive. It's not um, rot. It, well, it's not like this shell would have caused different damage. Right. You know, kind of thing. Um, that should be downloaded file. Oh. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, if the shell, let's say it went, uh, and I'm, I'm no. F- medical expert or anything or forensics guy, but I'm going to guess if the shell went and hit him, let's say from one side to the other, it would, there, there would be some outer flesh skin or, or whatever I would, I would imagine remaining. Although I don't know. Um, but you could see, it's just such a neat, almost surgical cut through and you know the guts. That's that's the fun stuff for the hogs to eat. So you know they're gonna go straight for that. It's soft. It's easy to get to. <laughs> it sounds like I've eaten the guts out of corpses before. <laughs> like I know this, but I just this is me just making a lot of guesses based on. All right, so there you go. Nothing. So this okay, is the so, let's zoom in. so if you're familiar, I'm sure you are the the rosewoods. Yeah. Um, so there's a big tree in the middle of the of the of the field. Dustin and them seem to think that this is that same tree. Oh, okay. 
So I'm not going to confirm it. I'm just telling you what they say. Right, all right. But there's your, there's another. Oh, God. It almost looks, wait, look at his face. It almost looks like the same guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Can you go on the face bar? Can I go on the face bar? Of course. I, anything for you, man. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's almost the same effect on the face. The lips there. Go in closer. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Well, it gets distorted. The so audience can handle it. It gets distorted. Um. Yeah, that's weird. But he has his left arm still intact. Yes. But now he does. Go, let's see the So that's like his that hip his area. Left hip. That would be his left hip. Yeah. Through there. And maybe that was a uh oh my god. I don't yeah. know. That's just horrendous. Yeah, so again, you talk about little details. Like here's and look at all the litter. box. Yeah. And, um like the, the the cool one too is like the interior of the breastwork, so a little round top. Oh, I bet. You know, there's there's a lot of debris in there that you can see, and um, you want to see the dead bodies, though. There's a hat. I was like, like this hat like popped out at me when I was doing this image. Like, wow, straw hat. If, if you go back here, it's like it's not apparent. You right know, now, you can't unsee it. Right, right, right. But you're looking at the bodies, and then you just zoom in, and it's like, oh, there's a hat, and that's cool. Yeah. So then you can go to like Dirty Billy's and say, <laughs> you know, he's an expert in making period hat sure so he's got pictures of this the hat the hats like this that you can grab that's the that's the beauty of of getting into this is that there's someone who specializes in every little aspect of what we're looking at in this picture and if something catches your eye you can find somebody who knows about that mm -hmm. and you yeah. know they can answer questions for you right you know and somebody one time i don't remember one image that somebody was said no his pants wouldn't have been gray because they were this unit and they wore brown pants you know? okay i'm like that's good information yeah so, you know i appreciate that you mean you don't get offended when somebody does that and go my research <laughs> said blah 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 no because i don't know i'm not <laughs> right. a historian i'm not an expert in it. i just I'm, I'm a hobbyist yeah you know but you've had like i think i said before you've had your um your doctors and and whatnot on you, know, you can see the bloating and the effects of rigor mortis and on their bodies and stuff yeah, that's... Uh, it's disturbing. <laughs> it really is. I mean, and you think now, I'm thinking of the people that have to clean this up. You know, a guy who's shot through the gut and not eaten by hogs or not ripped apart by artillery, that's ghastly enough after he's been sitting out there for four or five days mm -hmm. to go and, and, you know, recover him and, you know, bring him for burial. So I brought this one along, too, just, you know, again, you... Sort of look, you mentioned it before, but... Are we looking at, um, in the top of the frame there, are those leaves? Where is that? Uh, oh, yeah, there's a no. This is like a this is a blemish, but these are leaves here from a tree. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so, these are leaves. Here. But wait, it's blemish at the top. This is a blemish here. But these are leaves. Yeah, this this is leaves. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. around the frame, the yep. the top and the side. Yep. Yeah. Huh. But you know the the, the big question is like, why is this guy's finger always been taped? Like, what's the history behind that? Oh, that is. But now you can like really get wow it. look. What is that? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's one of the things, you know, or guys who do research into like uh, these are bullet canteens, you know, like, like there's a really cool example of wow. what it looks like. And wow, look at the detail on that. Right. And that's blurry too. That's a little blurry, <laughs> but that's yeah. neat. <clears throat> How about the uh, look go go to all of their hands. I'm fascinated by uh hands of the past. Hands of the past. As long as they're not dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fingernails are well groomed. Right? Yeah, it was, that's it's, it doesn't seem to be a lot of dirt under them. I can't tell. <laughs> no, it's all blown out. Oh, oh there's some dirt. Okay. And um, where's the other dude? I always like this guy because his hand, you know, he's like, I'm really proud. Yeah. You know, he's like, I like he's having hand. his picture made. Right. But he, he's got a ring on right here. See this? A it's pinky really, ring. It's got a pinky ring on. He's he's in the mafia. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you sure that's a it. ring and not a not a no, anomaly? It's not because if you look at it, it's... Like it's really bright. Oh, I and see. And it's yeah. very symmetrical. Yes. So now wow. this guy's got this black tape or whatever that is on. I wonder if he broke his finger or something. Oh, maybe. But it's just fascinating. But you get to, to see look like these their... are, these brogans are low cut. Yep. You know, versus higher cut ones. That mm. some other like this guy's boots are higher. Cut. Right. Right. So you can look and see even the different styles. This one's lower cut than those. This guy's is higher. And their pants. I mean, it's just really amazing to to see what they would have on them. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Look at zooming on their faces now. Let's look at their. Yeah, you thought it was country western dude. <laughs> yeah, that's the country western dude. He looks like a country singer. All right, but then okay, what color eyes would he have? Yeah, you that's know? a great question. <laughs> so, is there a way to tell that? Because um, I know, like, no, I can't tell. But but it, but isn't it true that on grayscale, that certain colors will present? Um, like like blue would actually come out lighter in black and white. Is that not the case? Some colors do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if he had green or brown eyes, it would be darker. Right. Now, yeah, let's go in the background. Let's see what we can see in the background. Well, it's it, it's a little blurry because of the atmospheric conditions. Sure, but sure. there's that poplar tree yep. right there. And that's probably the gatehouse, or this is the gatehouse here, one of these two. Okay. And then what are those buildings so These there? are the buildings. I think, like, I thought I read somewhere, like, this is the college, maybe, over no. in this area. No, I think the college would be... Uh, to off, the left, out, out of frame, out to, of the frame to the left. Yeah, okay. Because we're there. We're look. That's yeah, the south end town. of town. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so the that, Sheed's house would be over here somewhere, right? No, it'd be to the left too. Yeah. So that off frame. We're we're what we're looking at now, like where those trees are, right off to the right of the. Or to, I'm sorry, to the left of the soldier soldier on the left. Yeah, those trees yeah. there. Okay. Like that's neighborhood today. Yeah. Right. Well, all of that's neighborhood. Yeah, all of that's neighborhood. <laughs> Everything you can see is neighborhood snow. But like, uh, let's see those little white houses in the back. I wonder if we can make out what no, any of them would really be. Can't. One of them somewhere is the maybe the Dobbin. No, that would be more to the right. I think. I think these guys would be blocking the Dobbin house. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. But then you know you can take this and you put it into Google Earth or whatever, and then look at it and say, "This is where this picture was taken, and what was the angle?" <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. So that's so cool. Oh, oh, I, could, I, I could do this all day long. This is so neat. Yeah. I love this. This is great. Um, well, what other what other cool things do you do with <laughs> computers and that you could come on and show us again? Well, so again, you take this image. I'm just saying. We go to um, maps.google.com. And you can go to, let's just say, Rose Farm, Gettysburg. <clears throat> Come on. Did it not go to Gettysburg? Uh, oh, there's Gettysburg. Oh, it didn't go to the Rose Farm, though. Oh, there it is. Okay. So we'll go in here and go to the little rock top. I'm going to sh the map view. All right. So I'm in the Rosewoods right here. I can actually go to street view. Drop this in here and standing in the Rosewoods. <laughs> you know, so you can travel around. Yeah. And look at. Um, so which Google, which tree are you talking about that Dustin thinks is? Uh, um, this one. Right out there, that one, like right there. <laughs> it's hard to see. Yeah. Um, I would defer to him. You know what I mean? Him and Scott. Sure. Um, but he thinks that that's it. It's right. It's like right there. Yeah. Okay. So when you said that, that's kind of the area I was picturing. Yeah. Um, it's like this tree right here, right there. Okay. So you can do this, you know, like, and here's the split rock. Okay. You know, so yep. you can line up the photos yep. that you want and then, um, you can look at it and, you know, put the pictures you can, like, you can, <laughs> I don't have it with me, but you can take Frazanito's sketch that he did like from his book uh -huh. and put overlay that onto the field and see exactly where they, he thinks they lined up. And wow. It's really cool. That is cool. Um, but I don't know why it might not work in this version, but you can go and just zoom around and look all over the battlefield. If you want, you can visit devil's den and little round. You can go up little round top right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too soon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and it doesn't necessarily need to be here. So the other question like you can do with kids or you can do even yourself. So you're reading an account of, um, oh, well, let me think a minute. Oh, you read an account of uh, the 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 group that fired in Prolong, right? Bigelow's battery, right? So you can look and say, okay, well, what was their attack and how far could they attack and hit, um, you know, uh, Barksdale's Mississippians or whatever. You know what I mean? So, like, how far, what is their range? Mm -hmm. So you can use um, not so much Google Maps, but you can use Google Earth because it has a measuring tool. Yep. So you can create, a, do a Google Maps 
and create and then Google Earth and measure the distance so an effective soldier could hit somebody at 300 yards. So how far is 300 yards from the trussel barn? Let's just say. So what, how far would they have been shooting at people? Or what are the angles of a cannon? Um, there are maps out there that show where the cannons were lined up along, and you know, like the avenues and by the Pennsylvania Monument and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So what would their range have been moving left and right and forward and how far could they have hit some someone? Is that an effective way to, you know, to shoot them or whatnot? Yeah. And so the, little it, things like that allow you to to get into the battle. Okay, I've just read this story about 120th New York or whatever, the, you know, the Bigelow's battery, whatever, and fought there and then okay, what actually could have happened there and and done that sort of thing. So that's just another way to explore it. You know, you come out here and, um, you know, the 11th Pennsylvania fought along Doubleday Avenue right here. And you talk about Iverson's pits and you know, people say, well, where is that actually? It's out in here somewhere from what my understanding is. It's it actually, is, it's kind of where you just were. Yeah, up in here, right? No, 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 down. Down in here? Right, yeah. I was thought, I just thought it was up in here more. No, they started... From around there, started but, from around there, right. yeah, and okay. then they got to about right, right where you are in that right in field history, there, right. So they fought in through here, you know. Again, you get the kind of idea of looking at that, or you talked earlier, you know, like the photo that we just showed. Oh, there's Meade's headquarters was taken right here, right. So you can actually whatever the, that was the White House I was telling you about. Yep. So you take this and you drop this on here. And that photo was taken about right, right where that little sign was. Yeah, that's where the sign is, yep. Yeah, it was a little sign. I went too far. Right there. Yep. So it's kind of like this angle, right? Yep. And so looking out into the past. So clearly you can't see anything that's in that photo. Right. But, <laughs> yeah. So now there's, a, there's an interpretive sign right here now. Yeah. Yeah, but that's that's where the, the area where they think it was. So the Sheed's house is to the left. If yeah, you it's turn, down, it's it, down here. Yeah. No, the Sheed's house is down. Yep. This, here, yep. Yep. Further. Yep. And then uh, Lee's headquarters is back kind of behind left. you. Yeah, back to the left over here yep, behind, behind this house. Behind that house. Oh, there's the marker. I'm a little bit too far. There's the interpretive marker right there. Okay. But these are the kinds of things that you can do, and you know, show and do, uh, you know, technology, if you will, to to learn about battle, the Battle of Gettysburg, or any battle if you want. You know, I want to incorporate this uh, when we do, like, Ask a Guides or something. I, I need to have, this is why I need it. You want to be my uh, engineer? <laughs> <laughs> I need somebody in the back who just knows how to do this without me telling them how to do it or yeah. when to do it. And it's not, you know, it's not hard, but, you know. No, you just have to have and a brain. And there's the pond. We showed you the photo of the pond. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That. So you can see what it is. So you can see what's left of it. Right. Go, go zoom as far as you can go. We're, let's see if... um. You can see where, yeah, I mean, it was on the other side of the road. Yeah, but Brady's standing on this side, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then the photo was taken from here. Yeah. You know, or we were trying to tell somebody, like, oh, there's a, there's a rock carving on the side of the McPherson Bar. It's like right there. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly where it is. <laughs> you know, it's like right above that little window. Um, so um, I got in trouble, one, not in trouble. Somebody criticized me one time because I used, you know, you got down this road and you make a right. And they're like, that's east and west. And you got to use it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Right. I'm, no, I'm just yeah. trying to help people. You know, know what I mean? No, no, no. You're not helping in the way they would do it. Right. So it can't just, be right. I can't be perfect. You know, um, <laughs> you know, like you're going to get down in your tour. You go around the Virginia Monument. And you go back here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. You can see the the path I always take. Right. Go so, back to uh, Bigelow though, because um, there's there's another here, thing you right? could. Yeah, the Trussell Farm area there, but along Wheatfield Road is his first position. Right about where you are there. Okay. Okay. So the, right around there is where their first monument is. And then you go like the, in the direction your arrows go in there. Okay. To the Trossel farm. Mm -hmm. That's where their second position is the other monument. And then kind of to like two o'clock from that position. Uh, up in here. So yeah. Well, right. yeah. But you know, further out is where they're escaping to right so they're going back this way yeah so, the but first you can minister. but so cool is that you can just use google earth to right. like you said you could trace the steps of these units as you're reading about them correct you know and you can take the maps of um you know the gettysburg map book and i forget the name of the author of it of the Lano. Map. yeah the Bl Lano and godfrey to, to good map. yeah the, the one that's spiral bound yeah that's Lano. Lano map you know look at that and then look at it in google earth um and overlay it and I've, I've shown before, like you can actually do troop movements on like Canva or PowerPoint uh -huh. using the morph 
Yeah. You know, I think I've showed you that before. Um, or at least I've talked about it. You can do those quick little overlays that show you how to do it. Yeah, I, I got to get into doing stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I, I, I realize that I have to really up my YouTube game. <laughs> and <laughs> I, don't, um, I, need to, I don't have a YouTube game. <laughs> well, I don't either. <laughs> so maybe I have to get a YouTube game. But like, it, there's so many things that we can do that, you know, are visual. Because a lot of people are visual learners. Right. And, uh, and even people who aren't can appreciate the supplement of a visual to whatever they're learning. Right. So I, I just feel like, you know, there's, there's really no uh, good reason why we shouldn't be doing more YouTube stuff, um, except for the fact that I'm only one man and there's only so many hours in the day and so much energy in my body and I have a life too. And, you know, uh, yeah. it's too much, but I we'll get there. I, can remember, I can't remember my password. I'm going to try that. But the um, you, you can do it. You go to Canva and just use the morph or even PowerPoint and use the morph. You do position A and position B and you can move. And it morphs them. Yeah. And morphs them in the locations. That's good. I enough. might have a blog post on it on my website. Oh, well, there you go. Which is, of course, teach the civil war dot com. Mm -hmm. um, there's a link in the description if you want to check it out. Folks. Yeah, my Facebook page. And I do that. And I do. I share a lot on Twitter, too. I'm Pfeiffer 1863. F-I-F-E-R 1863 on Twitter. There you go. Uh, Barbara says, uh, just never heard that about the hogs. Thanks. Didn't know hogs eat meat either. They'll eat anything. <laughs> They'll eat anything. <laughs> right. Well, you know, and you get... That's why when someone you know is a glutton and they call him a hog, <laughs> they call a hog there's right? a reason. Um, well, listen, uh, Doc James, uh, this was uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. I, could I thought it was and... different for your listeners. Oh, it's very different, but it's very informative and interesting, I think. I'm, I'm very... Uh, I don't know. I might be getting into a new thing now, <laughs> which I'm really hoping is not the case. Yeah, because not the case, cause you, have, you, have, you have no time. I don't have any time for anything. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, here's Chamber. Like, the portraits are easy to do. That's a good way to start. If you want to start with something, pick a portrait. That's yeah, that easy. makes sense. It's only, you know, half a dozen colors, if that. There's a gold, there's a black, you know, blue skin cones. Right. 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 Yeah. Skin tones have to be hard, though. They're not, really. No? Once you get the right one, you know, like, some of it's by feel, you know. That's but you go amazing. to again. You go to images. You know Google Images, and you find you know men, male. You know get some samples, and you think, you know, in a picture, in a picture like this, he's cleaned up. You know, he doesn't have dirt on his skin. He's well shaven, so it's not that hard. You could go to get Jeff Daniels and kind of grab his skin tone. And yeah, so I did a little, a couple of polls of the audience uh, here while we were uh, doing this. The first question was, would you have the patience to learn how to do this? <laughs> and it is 50-50, no, and yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the second question was, does it bother you that some photos were staged or does it make it more interesting? 75% says, no, it makes it more interesting. And the 25 obviously, is, uh, yes, it bothers me. So I like the, I like the, so I'm from the photographer's point of view then. Why would they do that? Mm. You know, it makes better, not unlike what we do as, you know, artists or whatnot. Why do we do something? We make it for money or we make it more dramatic or, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think... Um, it's a better product. Well, and I think, like you're saying, the photographer is not a historian. He's not thinking He's as business. a historian. <laughs> right. Right, exactly. Those guys, yeah, they were taking photos that would ultimately be for posterity. But the reality of it is that they were trying to make a living. Right. And um, it's not easy to make a living as a photographer. Even to this day, it's very hard. And so, um, you know, you do something that... Now, what, what's interesting to me, though, is that they felt the need to do that with a brand new... It's well. How old is photography at that point? Like a, a decade and a half yeah, or so. Not much, yeah. Not, not very old. It's it's now. Uh, but this is like the first time they're photographing uh, a war in America, and they're at the battlefield. No one has seen this before. Right. You don't need to embellish it. Who has seen a man with his guts ripped out? Before, why do you need to put a shell and a musket? <laughs> I mean, I think there's enough drama in that photograph alone that you don't need to stage it. But I mean, it just goes to show that, like, the dishonesty that we see in art today, good or bad, it's dishonest. I'm not, I'm not putting a, a you know a moral judgment on by using that word. It's not honest, right? 
th that is not new. Um, it was used back then and uh, probably used long before in other art forms because it's poetic. It's life at a poetic level. And uh, I don't understand why uh, why you need it for, you know, the, the debris of battle, photos of that. But, you know, they, they felt they did. And uh, there you go. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> yeah, the other thing, I mean, you mentioned that, too. Like, wood is uh, different colors, too. You know, the outside bark versus inside and how oh, yeah. aged is in. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, wood is very rarely brown. Right. So <laughs> this won't end up ultimately being brown, but, you know, right. you get the idea. Yeah. Now, but already, though, it kind of just brings it to life. Just sort of pops it. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, Jim, thank you very much for Anytime. coming and doing this. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you, uh, I hope maybe some of you might want to pick up a new hobby. <laughs> um, that would be cool if uh, something we had on the show makes you get into something new that you uh, are passionate about. But uh, stick around if you're uh, a first lieutenant and watching live. Um, we're going to do another one at 2 o'clock with Corey Farr. Otherwise, that's it for us here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for listening. Thanks Thank for you for me. watching, those of you in the uh, first lieutenant and the fall preview uh, audience. And uh, we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, thanks.